A lot of people have been requesting that I start this series about the most hated companies. I'm not talking about the ones that have done something shady here or there, I'm talking about the companies that are just generally hated. Monsanto, for example, not a good reputation. Now, these can be touchy subjects, and I know there's a fine line here, but I don't intend this to be me trying to convince you that you should hate Monsanto. I look at it more as me informing you why many people do hate Monsanto. I hope that makes sense. I'm doing my best to leave my opinion out of it and just make it as informational as possible. So let's see how it goes. Monsanto dates back to 1901. It was started in St. Louis by this man named John Francisco Queenie. Monsanto was his wife's maiden name and he decided to name the company that. It's unclear why, but that's what he did. The initial intention for the business was to produce this artificial sweetener named saccharin. There's since been a lot of debate involving saccharin and health concerns, but in 1901, no one had any issues. He started selling it to the Coca-Cola company. After a few years, he started selling caffeine and vanilla, and by 1928, John Queenie had left his son a multi-million dollar chemical company. That's what they've been for a big part of their existence. In the 1940s, they started getting involved in agriculture and then biotechnology. That became an increasing part of their business, leading up to the 1996 spin-off of their chemical unit. Then in the year 2000, they did this thing where they merged with another company, then spun off their agricultural operations into a new separate company called Monsanto. In 2018, that company was bought by Bayer for $63 billion. They said they'd be getting rid of that Monsanto name. There's been a lot of changes, and through all of it, there's been a lot of hatred. So let's look at where it comes from. The atomic bomb. During World War II, in the early 1940s, there was this secret effort led by the United States to create an atomic bomb. It was called the Manhattan Project, and as part of it, they needed a bunch of this radioactive metal called polonium-210. But they didn't know how to separate it, and they couldn't obtain the amount that they needed. So the army contacts Monsanto for help with the issue. It turns out, Monsanto had just bought these laboratories in Dayton, Ohio, 10 years earlier, and were using them for their main research department. They accepted the challenge and started working on it over there. The whole thing was a success. The bomb was created and two of them were dropped on Japan. Plenty of arguments have been made concerning whether this was good or bad. But the fact is, Monsanto did play a part in creating that bomb, along with many others, I should make that clear, but you could see how their involvement could cause some hatred directed toward them. Agent Orange. This stuff was developed in the 1930s as an herbicide. It was used by farmers to kill weeds and plants, that sort of thing. Then in the 1960s, as part of the Vietnam War, the U.S. government had this idea of spraying it all over Vietnam in an attempt to kill their food supply. It was called Operation Ranch Hand and is very controversial. Over a nine-year span, the U.S. Air Force sprayed almost 20 million gallons of herbicides over Vietnam, and over half of that was specifically Agent Orange. So that's the big one here, and one of the major suppliers of it to the U.S. government was Monsanto. Well, it turns out it doesn't just kill plants. It's terribly harmful for humans that are exposed to it. As an effect of their exposure, when the U.S. Vietnam War veterans returned home, they were developing different types of cancers and other diseases. Their children had birth defects. It was bad. Estimates say it's negatively affected millions of people in the U.S., not to mention the people of Vietnam. Agent Orange is a wide topic that we can talk about for a long time, but let's get back to Monsanto. In 1979, the U.S. Vietnam War veterans collectively sued the chemical companies who made it and Monsanto was one of the major ones. In 1984, it ended with a $180 million out-of-court settlement. They admitted no liability, and looking back, it was kind of a win for Monsanto. Their stock price actually went up because a lot of people were expecting the outcome to be much worse. Their big defense in the whole thing was that the government set the specifications for making Agent Orange and determine when, where, and how it was used, sort of pushing the responsibility onto the government, which... They're all involved. There's been notes and other evidence found suggesting that Monsanto knew how harmful it was. I'm sure the government knew as well. It's really just a terrible thing. Related to that, as recent as 2012, they settled a lawsuit from the residents of Nitro, West Virginia. From 1949 through 1971, Monsanto had a plant there that produced some of the harmful ingredients used to make Agent Orange. The people who lived there claimed that they were exposed to ridiculously high levels of these harmful chemicals. For the settlement 
settlement, they didn't admit that they did anything wrong, but they agreed to pay millions of dollars in medical testing and professional house cleaning. Their responsibility in everything involving Agent Orange will continue to be debated, but the fact is, they were a major producer of something that harmed or killed millions of innocent people. And we can see how that would spark some hatred. Aspartame. That's another chemical with debate on whether or not it causes cancer or other health issues. It's an artificial sweetener, it's NutraSweet or equal. Well, in 1985, Monsanto spent $2.7 billion to buy the company that made NutraSweet. Just another example of them selling a chemical that is potentially harmful. PCBs. This one can also go deep. PCB stands for polychlorinated biphenyls. I don't know, but they used to be used all over the place. They were in refrigerators, paints, plastics, electrical equipment, but then we learned that it's dangerous. It likely causes cancer, it's bad news if you're around it when you're pregnant, and in general, it's just not something that should be everywhere. For these reasons, in 1979, it was banned by the EPA. They said that you cannot produce it anymore, and they had this plan to gradually phase it out where it was already being used. I don't think you'll be surprised to hear that Monsanto was the main producer of this stuff in North America. Again, they produced something that harmed a bunch of people, and again, the question is whether or not they realized how harmful it was. And again, <laughs> there have been plenty of documents found suggesting that they did. They knew it was harmful, but failed to inform anyone and continued to sell it. Some of the documents go back to the 1930s. And how about this? In 2003, they agreed to a $700 million settlement in connection with charges that accused them of dumping waste containing PCBs all around this town in Alabama called Aniston. That went on for years. It was in the air, in the water, and the residents had poor health because of it. It's generally believed that they've been pretty irresponsible with them and knowingly did some shady things that harmed the health of innocent people. Roundup. In 1976, they introduced this product called Roundup, and it was pretty awesome. It kills weeds and unwanted plants. It was used by farmers, everyday homeowners. You may have used it. It does a good job. Then in 1996, they were able to genetically modify these plants where they were basically immune to Roundup. They called them Roundup Ready Crops, meaning that you could spray it all over everything and only the unwanted plants and weeds would be harmed. There's been plenty of concern over those, along with other genetically modified modified organisms that they provide. They sell all of these seeds that are genetically modified in different ways. There's been so many arguments against them and for them. I do not want this to turn into a pros and cons of GMOs, but if you're against GMOs, and a lot of people are, you're probably against Monsanto. But back to Roundup. In 2018, there was increased concern over it. As it turns out, there's an ingredient in it that likely causes cancer. And of course, people dislike that. They specifically dislike how they fail to properly label it, how they tried to minimize it, it. There's been all these successful lawsuits from people who are diagnosed with cancer after using it a lot. There's been plenty of Roundup related outrage. RBGH. That stands for recombinant bovine growth hormone. It's a hormone you give to cows and they produce more milk. A lot of controversy surrounding this one too. It was approved in 1993 by the FDA but not allowed in Canada or Europe. In 1994, Monsanto quickly became a major producer of it. I don't want to spend too much time here but the backlash against it is that cows that are treated with it have increased rates of udder infections and other health issues. Plus, the milk that comes from these cows has elevated levels of this other hormone that looks like it could lead to various types of cancer. This is one of those things where you kinda have to learn about it yourself and form your own opinions, but many people disapprove of it, and since Monsanto was one of the first and biggest companies to provide RBGH, you can see how this would cause some hatred. Just to summarize, they were involved in making the atomic bomb. They supplied the government with tons Tons of Agent Orange that ended up harming millions of innocent people. They became a major supplier of the controversial chemical aspartame. They sold PCBs for years that they probably knew were harmful and were seemingly irresponsible in disposing waste containing it. They sold Roundup Weed Killer without sufficiently warning us that it can be harmful. Not to mention the Roundup Ready crops and all of the highly debated GMOs, which leads me to RBGH for cows, which again may be harmful for cows and humans. I think we can see the pattern here. Over the years, they've sold a lot of harmful stuff. Some of it is debated, some of it is pretty conclusive. Sometimes they knew what they were doing and sometimes they didn't. This has all been very negative. It's the nature of the video, but there is some good too. I mean, Monsanto has been a major chemical company and a major agricultural company that's provided some important products. There's a lot of people that are in favor of a lot of the stuff that I mentioned in this video. Let me know in the comments, did I cover it pretty well? I fear I may have glossed over the GMOs and what that means for the farmers and the labeling 
everything going on there. That's probably the biggest reason they're hated today, but there's a lot to cover, and a lot of stuff that I didn't even get to. DDT, for example, the concept of Terminator seeds, styrofoam, or their equivalent of it. So before you form your opinions about Monsanto, I recommend you look a little more into this stuff. Finally, what do you think of the new series? It's a little different from the stuff I normally do, so I'd appreciate the feedback. And what other companies would you like to see covered? I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.